The Spiritual Aspect of Dogs These special creatures appear in our lives for a purpose and at a specific time. Although their appearance may be different from the last time they were with you, you may recognize something familiar about their personality and you may sense a bond immediately as you look in their eyes. Look closely when a new pet comes into your life and you will know. Claire Montanaro, The Spiritual Life of Pets and Other Animals Some people believe that animals also have a connection to the spirit realm and that certain pets, which join us during various periods in our lives, are part of our spiritual network, returning time and again throughout our many physical experiences and incarnations. These soul pets or guardian spirits will invariably seek you out at a point in your life when you subconsciously truly need them. Herd animals such as cows and sheep are thought to share a common soul, like a hive type of awareness due to their basic evolutionary level. Consequently, it is assumed that they do not possess an established connection to what we would consider a spiritual consciousness. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Genesis 1.26 this verse from Genesis talks about giving man dominion over the livestock and all things which creep on the earth. Pets are not normally considered as livestock and therefore have more of an advanced form of consciousness than the wild or herd animals mentioned in Genesis. This could be due to their unique and more sophisticated connection to the spirit world and as a consequence we treat them more favorably than the animals we have dominion over, ones which are generally reared for consumption. Evidence for the domestication of dogs as pets and companions goes back at least 12,000 years. The ancient temple of Gebekli Tepe in Turkey is a recent discovery proving human culture and social structures existed all those years ago, showing evidence which points to the domestication of dogs. In ancient Persia, dogs were said to guard the bridge between this world and the next, and depending upon how one treated their dog would influence their chances of reaching paradise, beyond the divide. Persian dogs throughout this period were thought to have souls, made up of one-third wild animal, one-third human and one-third divine. As a result, they were given their own funerals, sometimes equal in status to that of humans. They also had a tradition in which dogs would be brought close to a newly deceased person due to their superior senses for some form of practical or spiritual reason. Many ancient civilizations and cultures treated dogs with similar regard. Records from China suggest that their ancestors saw the dog as a gift from the heavens, which gave them an elevated status. Consequently, their blood was often used to seal oaths and allegiances. Dogs were sacrificed and burned in front of one's house or even at the city gates as a way to ward off evil spirits and protect those living within the city walls from bad luck and disease. The Mayan and Aztec cultures have a similar belief regarding their dogs, believing that they could help a recently deceased soul navigate its way into paradise. 
any soul which died alone, receiving no proper burial, would be found by spirit dogs, who would lead them to where they needed to go. Some Mesoamerican cultures tell of a time when dogs were instrumental in the destruction of an ungrateful and unknowing race of humans, which the gods first created, but later regretted. They say that because dogs have been here longer than this present race of humans, they were treated with the same amount of respect as the elders in their society. In ancient Egypt, the dog was linked to the jackal god Anubis, a figure who would guide the newly deceased to the Hall of Truth, a place where their soul would be judged by the great god Osiris. Wealthy Egyptian families would have their dogs mummified after death, along with an elegant burial service. The Greeks, who also domesticated their dogs, saw them as companions, protectors and hunting aids. They introduced the spiked collar as a way of shielding the dog from preying wolves. Socrates claimed in Plato's Republic that the dog was a true philosopher, and surely this instinct of the dog is very charming. Your dog is a true philosopher. Why? Because he distinguishes the face of a friend and of an enemy only by the criterion of knowing and not knowing. And must not an animal be a lover of learning who determines what he likes and dislikes by the test of knowledge and ignorance. Therefore, the dog has learned who is a friend and who is foe, based on the simple knowledge of truth, whereas humans are often deceived as to who their true friends are due to hidden motives and agendas. Cerebus was a Greek mythological three-headed dog who guarded the gates of Hades, also known as the Hound of Hades. His role was to prevent the dead from leaving. Argos, another famous Greek dog, was the loyal companion of King Odysseus of Ithaca. From Homer's book Odyssey, 800 BC, in the story, King Odysseus returns home after 20 years, unrecognized by his wife and her entourage of suitors, who, while trying to gain her hand in marriage, became hostile towards Odysseus, unsure of who he was and what his motives were. In spite of this hostility, his loyal dog Argos did recognize his master and rose up from the spot he had been faithfully waiting for twenty years. Unable to give away his disguise, Odysseus ignored his old friend, who, as a result, lay back down and died. This story expresses the unwavering devotion a dog has towards his master, no matter how long they have been apart. In ancient Greece, there was a school of philosophers known as cynics. These cynics tried to live a life of virtue in harmony with nature by rejecting all conventional desires for material wealth, power and fame. They would lead a simple life on a day-to-day -day basis, free from social toils and unnecessary possessions. The first philosopher to outline these concepts was a pupil of Socrates by the name of Antisthenes back in the late 5th century BC. He was followed by an extreme cynic called Diogenes who lived in a ceramic jar out on the streets of Athens. Following on from Diogenes was Crates of Thebes, a man who gave away a large personal fortune to live the life of an Athenian cynic in abject poverty. The name cynic is derived from the ancient Greek word kinikus, which translates into dog-like. This name was given to the first cynic philosophers partly because Antisthenes taught his initial concepts in the Cynosargus gymnasium in Athens, the place of the white dog. It is also believed 
that the term dog was used to describe these people as an insult for their lifestyle and rejection of conventional manners, choosing instead to live like dogs on the streets of Athens. Diogenes was often referred to as a dog. The modern interpretation of the term cynicism has evolved from the negative aspects of this ideology, drawing from its disbelief in the sincerity or goodness of human motives and actions. Dogs in Rome were viewed in much the same way as they were in Greece, very much appreciated as guardians of the home. Never with them on guard need you fear for your stalls a midnight thief or onslaught of wolves or Iberian brigands at your back. Virgil. The Roman goddess Trivia, the Roman version of the Greek Hecate, was the queen of ghosts, who haunted crossroads and graveyards together with an association with witchcraft. A dog who seemingly barked away at nothing was thought to be warning those around them against the approach of Trivia or some other malevolent spirit. Dogs possess senses far superior to those of humans, giving them a greater depth and perception of the environment in which they occupy. While humans try to rationalize, judge and even deny some of their own senses, dogs do not. They react in a pure and unbiased manner according to what is going on around them. If you observe a dog standing in the corner, barking at nothing visible, then there's a pretty good chance that he's barking at an entity, spirit or energy that doesn't belong there. Marty Miller, Pet Psychologist Dogs have over 100 million olfactory sensory receptors in their nose compared to humans who have only 6 million. Furthermore, the part of their brain responsible for processing odours is around 40 times larger than ours. It is therefore estimated that dogs in general can smell 1,000 to 10,000 times greater than we do. The dog's nostrils work independently from each other, allowing them to quickly establish the direction of scent. The air passageways at the end of the nose direct air leaving from mixing too much with the air entering, preserving the integrity of the initial scent. The dog's nostril tissues are arranged in such a way as to channel 12% of that air into a separate area at the back of the nose, trapping and mixing the air with the dog's mucus, allowing further analysis of the scent's chemical makeup. Due to the dog's advanced sense of smell, Humans have trained them to help locate missing people, dead bodies, drugs and explosives, together with sniffing out tumours and helping the blind. Together with a superior sense of smell, many dogs have impressive hearing. With three times the number of muscles in the outer ear, they are able to rotate their ears towards any noise, funneling the sound towards their inner ear. With a longer ear canal, the muscles help to process the sound in such a way as to give them greater sensitivity in pitch and volume. While humans are only able to hear sounds between 20 Hz and 20,000 Hz, a dog's range is far greater at between 67 Hz to 45,000 Hz. Furthermore, they have the ability to hear these frequencies at a reduced volume. While human eyes look straight forward, the average dog's eyes are set at an approximate angle of 20 degrees. While this increases their field of vision, they lose out on their binocular perspective when it comes to detail. Having only one-tenth the cone receptors of the human eye, the dog's retina is geared more towards motion with greater sensitivity in dim lighting, at the expense of colour perception and clarity. New evidence suggests that they only see variations of blues, yellows and greys, allowing 61% more ultraviolet light 
to pass on to their retinas, giving them greater scope within the ultraviolet range. Most dogs have what is referred to as 2075 vision, meaning they can identify an object at 20 feet, which we humans can see clearly at 75. However, some breeds of Labrador are bred with almost 2020 vision, many of which are used as guide dogs for the blind. Our perception of reality within this physical realm is formed from the detectable scope within our senses. As humans, our five senses are relatively modest, almost handicapping us with limited capacity at detecting various forms and expressions of energy occupying the space within our surroundings. It is therefore plausible to assume that expressions of conscious energy which our sensory range fails to detect does not necessarily mean that these energies do not exist. However, dogs with a superior range of detectability could very well pick up on energies we as humans are unaware of. It is believed by many spiritualists and esoteric wisdom seekers that human consciousness exists outside the biological vessel of the human body. And as an independent form of energy, our consciousness or point of attention separates from the body on death, releasing it back into its natural state within the higher vibrational frequency ranges associated with the spirit realm, essentially becoming spirits or light beings. Hence why, in our ancient past and traditional cultures, it was believed that the dog had the ability to interface with the fringes of these higher frequency realms connected to the afterlife. In the book Tales of the Afterlife by Peggy Schmidt, she gives multiple accounts of unexplainable actions taken by various dogs who apparently interact with what can only be described as unseen entities or spirits. In one account she mentions a lady by the name of Del Johnson who died suddenly leaving six cats and seven dogs. Many believe that Mrs Johnson still visits her pets daily. Eyewitness reports tell of seeing her animals suddenly gather in one spot. Furthermore, the dogs would wag their tails and flop over for a belly rub, while the cats arched their backs and purred, all sitting to attention while staring into the air as though there were some form of conscious energy giving them a great deal of attention. There is a strong connection between humans and animals that defies present day scientific understanding. Rupert Sheldrake the number one clue that there's something present is that your pet will stare up into the corner of a room at nothing. Upper corners of rooms are energy vortices. Energy collects there like a dust bunny under your couch. So you'll see the pet staring up in the corner or your dog will look up and start barking. Pets might also act really weird. They won't go into a certain bedroom or they won't go into a basement. I hear that a lot. Karen Anderson, a professional animal communicator, psychic and medium. Both wild and domestic animals have been seen acting strangely before earthquakes and tsunamis. During the Boxing Day Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami of 2004, dogs were seen to display distress with a change in behavior before humans noticed anything unusual. Dogs were seen barking profusely, running for cover, or refusing to go outside many minutes before the visible effects became apparent. Experts have suggested that some dogs can sense the Earth's vibrational changes before we humans can. The word animal is interesting in its own right, as the word could be viewed as ani to animate and mal, which derives from the Latin meaning bad, evil or wrongly. Whilst this description applies to a number of wild animals, it most certainly does not reflect the majority of family pets who appear to possess a more advanced form of consciousness 
closer to that of humans as opposed to the beasts found out in the fields, which are regarded by some as animated evil. Not every beast has a soul that goes to heaven. However, there are higher level beings and low level beings. Ants, for example, I'm confident, don't die and go to heaven to live eternity in bliss. Smack a mosquito. Sorry, it's not going to be going to heaven to live a wonderful eternity. The truth is, there are specific differentiations with animals. All animals that have compassion to humans have a soul. The bottom line is this. If the animal had an emotional connection with you, then I can assure you, they are on the other side. Blair Robertson, Psychic Medium.